And we are off to the races. Right, coming in hot with 1-1, one -one, so our racers are going to take a moment to build that P-Speed right away, make their way over that first Fire Prana, boost into the clouds off that Paracoupa, a quick and easy way to avoid those obstacles on the ground that could potentially slow you down. And they both get that boost, very nicely done. So coming up next, we'll have 1-2. It has a pretty finicky P-Speed strat right in the beginning. It requires just running up the base of both those hills uh, just ever so slightly to start building that meter. You'll know the strat works when you get six filled arrows as you cross over that first horizontal pipe, and then you'll have liftoff by the time you reach the second. It'll only save you about a whopping one second, but if you don't get it, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Again, although this is technically a race, um, time is only a secondary factor, albeit a pretty important one these obstacles that um, our racers are going to have for us in store for these two warpless races. Um, the main obstacle that they're going to want to go for in World 1 is going to be the MFP tunnel coming up in 1-5. So they're going to want to grab that leaf right in the beginning, and then that'll be a good opportunity uh, to damage boost right down the hill. Start acquiring that speed. So we had, um... So they finally up on the, um, on the ceiling for the magic whistle. Won't be used at any point during the race. But it, it does save time over Boom Boom. You see Stewie going into the 1-5. Bowtie not too far behind. So does Stewie get the MFP tunnel? Going for it. And he gets it! That's a point five. Really nicely done. Yeah, Bowtie didn't do the duck jump into the tunnel, so he didn't really have an opportunity to follow suit, but that's okay. Zero, zero planes, I'm sorry. So Stewie's coming in with the star. He'll be the first going onto the onto the airship. At death, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Stewie's gonna actually be hit there with um, the punishment there. I've never seen Stewie die like this. I don't even know what happened. Um, how you doing over there, Teeks? Oh, and yourself? I'm pretty good. You went a little quiet there. Are you getting any cutouts or? Uh, yeah, the the video cut out with my call with you. Weird, weird. Okay. Well, hopefully, if it goes quiet, I'll, I'll step in. If not, it, it'll be fine. You're doing great. Yeah, thank you. Until things uh, clear up on our side on Discord, I'll have to, uh, to watch the Speed Gaming channel in the meantime, so I apologize in advance if my commentary is a little bit delayed. Difficulties that are out of my control. So yeah, it looks like uh, both Stewie and Zero Planes are in the um, are in the World 1 airship, so they'll both have an opportunity to re-grab the fire. Thankfully, this doesn't affect um, their opportunity to, to get the fire bonus going into to World 6, so they're still on even playing ground. Looks like Zero Planes tried to go for the off-screen wall grab with that, uh, with that wall jump, but unfortunately it wasn't on the right subpixel. So, Zero Planes is in the 2-1, so, um, yeah, he's carrying that P-Speed very nicely done. Holding on to that Fire Flower. It's very easy to get trolled by that Fire Snake when you're on the ground, but he's able to maneuver it really well. Stewie, not too far behind. There's a couple, um, there's a couple objectives that, they're, um, that are worth looking out for in World 2. Um, 
The, fir the first of which is going to be um, getting the um, the two twenty two in the uh, in the level two dash two. So unfortunately, it looks like zero planes took a little bit of damage along the way, but I didn't take any deaths, so he's still in pretty good shape. on the other hand, has uh, some really good acceleration just uh, sliding down that hill. He's able to make those bounces on the Koopas. Does he get it? Oh, he gets 290. Yeah, it was a little bit of slow, just um, just trying to land those jumps when he was hitting the ground after that slide. Just couldn't get the... couldn't maintain the acceleration. And so, both far races in 2F. Early P-Speed, very nicely done. Get three stomps down, and Zero Plane just finish up Boom Boom. Stewie's able to gain a little bit of time back with those extra seconds. So both of our players are going to want to skip that first music row right in the beginning. It's not really going to be necessary over the course of this run. It's just going to slow them down. So hopefully that um, that heart, that good RNG just carries over. And then they'll be able to just grab the hammer and then just continue on. Like Stewie went for the, the red rocket strat. So he was able to grab that, that, red, that red Koopa shell right in the beginning. Gain some P-speed for the majority of 2-3. And then... Um, it increased the, the shell's acceleration by the time he threw it, so it was able to access that pipe a couple frames earlier. It doesn't save a little too much. It doesn't save that much time, but it's really, really, uh, really swag when it works out. So they're both uh, pretty close in uh, time with one another, so they're both in the angry sun level. Has some really well-timed jumps going past, um, going past the sun, and as long as they're on those horizontal set of blocks that are on the ground, they won't have to worry about taking any damage. Right on. So we see us. So we see both of our runners going through 2 5. So, I mean, this level is one second slower, but uh, the name of the game is they want to get as close as they can to that hammer, bro, so they can grab the hammer as soon as they can, uh, not have to do any wrapping around on the, on the World 2 uh, map circuit, and then just go straight to the pyramid. Both do a really good job maintaining that P speed. So. Zero Planes is going to be the first one to, to fight the, the hammer. Dewey, on the other hand, the other hand is in the pyramid. He's going to get that P-speed right away, and he has a couple invincibility frames as soon as that shell ricochets, so we can just kind of slide and duck, just duck slide right through, and he doesn't have to worry about damage there. Still wants to be a little careful when he's making those tight jumps. So really, really nicely done as well. I actually made a mistake in my um, in my race with Supersonic, where I just jumped a little too early and lost my fire bonus right away. You hate to see it. Planes is taken a little bit more carefully. He, uh, he doesn't have a fire to defend himself with, so uh, the next opportunity he'll have is on the, the World 2 airship, where he'll be um, both of them will be fighting Morton. Stewie is just wrapped things up with the hammer. So the next objective is here is going to be to get that 221 on the timer after fighting Morton. It's a, another thing that's worth noting is that um, each of these Koopaling fights have... Um, all of them have a fixed set of patterns. So sometimes you'll see them shoot their wand right away. Sometimes they'll just walk for a couple seconds before doing anything else. Um, sometimes they'll just jump right away. Um, but it's worth noting that all of these patterns operate on a timer that um, that begins from the last level you finish to the time you enter the pipe in the airship. Um, so if you know where you are on the map, how many hammer bro movements you got, and um, you don't do any pipe delays, you can anticipate in advance uh, what kind of fight is going to be. And that'll especially be important when um, for both of our races as they go in for these uh, these fire kills. You generally see uh, fire kills in Warpless just because they save two to three seconds um, with an optimal fight. Um, you know, just compared to doing the, the three stomp kill. So Stewie uh, is probably not in the best position that he would want to be for this uh, for this fight because 
Um, he fought the Hammer Bro just one space away from the castle, and it usually doesn't yield good results for him. But we'll see if he's, if he's able to improvise well. If you watch Morton really carefully, you should still be able to work it out. So we got an early one pattern. You often see that with movements of one and two, really nicely done. So he's absolutely happy right now with that extra 0.5 points. You can totally see that zero planes there. He, um, I think just lack of, of experience, he is definitely the underdog in this race. Um, but I will say he took his first two shots and if you notice the shots bounced and he didn't even, they didn't even connect with the boss. And that's just, that just goes with like having to constantly keep fighting that boss and seeing. Um, let's keep an eye on Stewie's screen right now. Does he get the first frame jump? He does not get the first frame jump. All right, Teeks, take it away. All right. So we'll see, um, you know, very shortly if Zero Planes is able to follow suit and see if he's able to get the first frame jump. And he doesn't. So yeah, there aren't going to be any uh, dangers ahead in 3-1, uh, so just going to take those bloopers out and then just maintain P-Speed over that ceiling. And then they'll be out of here. So 3-2 and 3-3 are going to be some really crucial levels where, um, you know, you have those hazards like the Cheap Cheeps and the Boss Pass in the water. So they're going to want to be uh, fast but not too care. Um, they don't want to be too careful where it slows them down either. So Stewie is going to be the first. He'll be going for that early P-Speed strat. Does he get it? He does. Is he able to maintain it without taking damage? Or are the Cheap Cheeps going to give him some trouble? No, nope, they don't. Really, really good job from Stu. Yeah, getting that early P-Speed right there in the beginning saves about three seconds. Oh, just as I had mentioned before, we had some really nasty, nasty hitbox interactions with the Chief Chiefs. And that often happens when uh, Mario and the enemy's accelerations are too fast when they're coming in contact with one another. You saw that he was right over the Chief Chief's head when he was going to stomp him. Um, but yeah, he was a little too close to the ground and the Chief Chief was going too fast. Yeah, for those who are just uh, joining us and are not really familiar with how the, the point system works, um, if you type in exclamation SMB3, the entire rule set document is going to be right there um, with all the information. So this is a different format than you would normally see. Uh, oh, we saw Stewie just try to go for door three, but unfortunately he wasn't able to get it on his first try. So he's going to lose about 11 seconds here, and then he's just going to go straight forward to boom, boom. But yeah, this is going to be different from your, your typical uh, tournament format where you just see two speedrunners racing and then whoever has the fastest time wins. Um, time is going to be important in this tournament format, but it's not going to be the only defining factor. All, the, both, all of our runners in this tournament are going to be going for objectives over the course of the run where they have an opportunity to score points. And it could be something like just a frame-perfect trick like we saw both uh, Zero Planes and Stewie go for. They weren't able to get door three this time, but yeah, we'll see a, a variety of things that both our races can be rewarded for, and then you'll see it in the tracker uh, just below you. Planes unfortunately have to go to door six and then have to do the traditional three stun kill on Boom Boom. But he'll have an opportunity to grab a fire uh, by the time he gets three dash four. Stewie's going to go straight for the star bro right here in World 3 because it looks like he was just getting ready to run away. And you never want to have a runaway bro in a warpless run because um, as soon as they run away across the bridge or across the level 3-6 panel, um, that messes up the, the bridge pattern so we wouldn't have, be able to uh, use the cloud to fly across to get to 3-8. And you really need that, uh, you really need that shortcut to save time. That would normally be a reset in a normal warpless speed run, but uh, otherwise, if something like that happens, you would have to uh, know how to improvise that either by playing 3-6 or clouding over 3-6 to get to 3-7 and um, you know grabbing the cloud there and then just uh, improvising from there. Ooh, Stewie was being a little more careful with the, the jumps. He almost made a mistake that I did by getting eaten by boss bass. Zero Plane's making some really solid progress in 3-4, and he's really not far behind at all. All right, 3-9. The Stewie gets the H jump. Gets this P-Speed. He's making his jumps. Does he do it? Ooh, he was very close, but he was a little too late on that last uh, single block. 
And it's absolutely crucial to um, to be able to make that age jump in any warpless run because if you do miss it, you also generate a lot of lag um, just from having so many sprites on the screen when you're just trying to throw those ice blocks at the enemies and just try to clear a path to yourself. And that can lose you a good five to seven seconds, depending on how you're able to make it through there. So Zero Planes is able to make the age jump. He'll be able to gain a little bit of time on Stewie. Does he do it? He does. Very nicely done. Right, so coming up next on the uh, the list of objectives for World 3, we're going to potentially see um, a Wendy, um, the Wendy reward. So the name of the game is you want to beat Wendy when um, with two with 210 on the in-game timer and have three of her rings all on the screen at the same time. So, but you have to be really careful with the timing of the, the, the fireballs if you're going to do the strat where, you know, you shoot nine into her and then get her on the tenth one. Uh, because sometimes those rings can really wall you in as well, and that can just kind of trap you and cause you to take damage. And you never want that to happen, especially if you're just trying to go for the Fire Flower bonus and hold on to it for World Six. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of hazards involved with that. Yeah, we um we actually saw that in one of the earlier races where um Louis was on the left side of the screen in the battle, right? And both Wendy and all the rings were going towards the left side, and he could just not secure that uh, that 210 kill with the three rings, right? So you really want to be careful which side of the screen you're on and where the rings are moving. All right, Stewie's going to go for his right now. Take it away, Teeks. All right, does he, is he able to do it? Two, four, five, seven, nine, ten. Oh, he didn't go for the strat. He just decided to go for the, the straightforward uh, 10 fireball strat. So he doesn't get the reward from that, but he is safe and he's able to maintain his fire flower going into World 4. Can't really blame him for doing that if it's not something that he uh, necessarily feels confident with. Uh, it is a very risky strat to go for. And, um, you know, Wendy's pattern isn't always going to be uh, consistent. I mean, you could always fight it the same way if you're just going for the straightforward 10, fire, uh, 10 fireball approach. But there are some minor nuances to work uh, to watch out for because sometimes she'll, you know, do small hops right away. She might do her her big leap right in the air a little earlier than you might expect her to. So um, it's worth doing a lot of experimentation for before you decide to um, to really worry about that. It looks like um, Zero Planes finished off with a 209 on the timer. Looks like he got close, but uh, unfortunately no cigar. It looks like Stu took some damage in 4-1, had some miscalculated jumps along the way. But he won't be able to get his Fire Flower back until he gets to uh, 4-F-2. So because he won't be able to Fire Kill and Boom Boom in 4-F-1, he won't be able to get the 288 on the timer. So he may want to use, it might be a good opportunity to use his hammy here, uh, break the rock, and then just go straight to 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I see, I see Narf, man. I see you in chat. We do hate to see it. Right, we get the Zero Planes was able to get the Peace Beast Dragon for 4-1, uh, able to go straight up the waterfall without taking any damage. Right, 4-3, this is a really fun level to watch, both, and it's really enjoyable, uh, like really satisfying um, for the racer as well. They just... You don't have to have any disruptions in your P-Speed, you can just run straight through, and as long as you know where how the level layout works and where all the enemies are, um, everything can just flow really, really well, as we're seeing uh, Stewie demonstrate for us right now. You'd love to see. Alright, Stewie, just as I had mentioned, is going to use his hammer to break the rock. He's just going to go straight for 4 4. Normally he likes to do the strat where you do a duck jump with P-Speed going into that water so that he can get the double kill on the Lakitu and Spiny Egg. But because he doesn't have his fire, he's going to have to go a slightly more conventional route, but he's able to do it. He's able to get that power swim, so is he able to avoid that last snipe on the from the Spiny Egg? No, unfortunately not. So he's going to want to take a moment to get a mushroom from either 4-6 or 4-5 and then grab his fire in the fort. So we'll see what kind of RNG he has coming up right now. He's going to want to avoid that star bro that's coming up um, uh, later on in the map. But it looks like he's taking a pit stop, maybe hoping to see if he can grab a fire flower on, along the way as backup. Unfortunately, he lost that lottery bet, and he picked up a leaf instead. 
but he's still able to use it as an opportunity to damage boost if he wants to do peace speed strats later on in World 4. Meanwhile, we see uh, Zero Planes making his way over to 4-4. We'll see if he has any better luck with the Lakitu. It's worth noting that um, Lakitu's uh, behavior in the sky is not RNG. Uh, a lot of it, uh, the way he floats around and the way he throws those spiny eggs is dependent on how, the, how Mario moves around in the water and how he's able to get across the map and swim. So if you, um, so in theory, uh, if you play the, the level the exact same way, you'll always get the exact same results, but it's much easier said than done. So it looks like Stewie, uh, just as I had mentioned, he's going to take that damage boost so he can do P-Speed strats in 4-6. Not a bad move at all. Um, this is a really, really smart backup. So he'll have an opportunity to grab that fire in 4-F2. Once again, wanting to avoid those Star Bros. Meanwhile, we're joined by a raid from Speed Gaming 3 channel, the party of 165. Just welcome everybody who's just tuning in. Um, this is an SMB3 Warpless tournament, uh, the point system tournament that's hosted by Mitch Flower Power. So those um, who are new to the show, uh, if you type in exclamation SMB3, all the rule sets and all the formats is going to be right there. And so Zero Planes is going to be picking up the, the Fire Flower in 4 Act 2. So he'll have a he'll have a way of defending himself against Iggy going into the World 4 airship, and he'll be able to get that quick kill on Boom Boom, saving him a couple seconds. Right, so we're going to be on the, the slowest moving airship and one of the longest ones in the game. So this one's going to be clocking in at a little over two minutes before we get our chance to, to see the Iggy fight. So if you have any snacks, if you want to go to the bathroom right now, uh, now is definitely a good opportunity to do so. Let me, uh, let me just chime in there for one quick second so you guys can take a look while we're on this long airship. Uh, Stewie got a Starbro. I made sure I marked that off. I don't think Zero Planes got it which actually makes Zero Planes still in the lead right now with 1.5. I'm pretty sure they both have taken damage, so they're not going to be able to get that reward. Um, but if you guys look at the challenge page right now, we have Teeks and Supersonic, the first match. Teeks moves forward right now. We've had Brosis, 420, and Louie, and Louie had won that match, so he's going to move forward. This will be updated soon, don't worry. Then we had Narfman and Cobra, and Narfman is actually going to move forward. So it's going to be Louis versus Narfman next, which is going to be awesome. And right now we have Zero Planes versus Stewie Cartman. So this is going to be great. This is game one of that. Also, if you guys are looking to see as well a, a better clear picture of who is fully in this. We got this right here, little thing right here. Some of these runners are crossed out because they lost. But it's okay to lose. All right, a little, little something for us to look at. If you guys also want to see, we got Teeks's stats right here. He's got a total of 13.5 points. He's won two games. He got he has an average of 6.75 points per game, and he is in the top eight right now. And he ran against Supersonic. Oh, we got a battle. We got a battle. Let's not miss the battles. All right, take it away, Teeks. All right, so looks like Stewie's going in for the fire kill on Iggy. Is he able to do it? Looks like Iggy tried to take him out with a bunch of wand grabs, but uh, with a bunch of wand shots, but wasn't able to do it. So Stewie was able to advance to World Five, really nicely done. Yeah, it's one of those, you know, especially with Koopa Links, especially with Iggy, you want to be on top of him as much as you can. Don't let him have, get a chance to get away because um, those fights can turn ugly really quickly. Zero Planes taking a little bit safer, but he's able to uh, to follow suit, take him out of commission. We see um, we're going to be seeing both of our racers go through uh, level 5-1, the, the traditional route, just going straight up the steps and then just taking out the enemies on the lower ground before uh, completing the level. Um, it's actually worth noting for those who follow the um, the SMB3 speedruns and, and Warpless, especially those who watch Mitch, um, there's actually a new routing strat that's uh, that's been discussed for for our, our runs. 
and it usually involves getting the p-wing and then just flying up to the pipe to, to grab the music box on the end so that would actually allow you to um to minimize how much rng has control over your run uh you know just by knocking out the the hammer bros that you don't need in both worlds four and five but because that route is banned uh we're going to be seeing them uh, have to take a little bit more gambles with the, the hammer bro luck this time around So we actually, we actually just saw Stewie there. Uh, he did the spade card game. And for any of you guys who were watching the first two games, the reason he did the spade game, or so it seems, is because I think he's actually going to go for the Jesus clip. And if it fails, he's going to have a Fire Flower backup. So that was actually pretty crazy that Stewie went for that. This is the first time and the first person we have actually seen uh, take that strategy. So that's actually pretty interesting. There's one thing that I've learned from watching a lot of uh, Stewie's runs is that he's really knowledgeable about how the card game works. So he's able to match those cards really well. He knows the permutations like the back of his hand. So he's pretty much guaranteed to get a Fire Flower at some point. And he really only needs one for what he's planning to do in this run. Zero Plane taken a little bit more carefully around uh, 5F1 so he doesn't get hit by the Roto Disc. Pays off, he's able to get to Boom Boom's room unscathed. Meanwhile, we see Stewie making his way through the spiral tower, uh, doing his best to avoid the road of discs on his end, while still maintaining PDP speed up I mean, to do through those first two rooms. And he's able to get the Sunday sequence pipe clip. Really nice. It's not something you see very often. Zero planes also just getting a movement of four. Sorry, but you get no rewards for those movements of four. Also worth noting that none of our racers fell on the shaft in level 5-2, so none of them had to get penalized for that. So, yeah, as mentioned, um, as was mentioned before, both of our racers uh, do have an opportunity to grab some points, uh, a really big bonus if they get the Jesus clip, and um, an additional points for having good RNG with the Hammer Bros. So if both of them are able to avoid getting any movements of four throughout World 5, uh, that's an additional 0.5 right there. For those who are just wondering what the Jesus clip does, it allows you to clip the wall right in the first room where that lava is uh, in 5 of 2, and it'll take you straight to Boom Boom's room and it saves you about three and a half seconds. Uh, it's a very big risk for a very little reward, uh, just in terms of time, but um, yeah, it's going to be counted as a very big reward in the context of this tournament format. So if they already taken damage at some point during the run, you know, like losing the Fire Flower, um, it may it may be a very good idea for them to do so, uh, especially if they've taken any deaths along the way, don't really have any much more to lose because they already lost the deathless bonus. So um, just adding on another 0.5 for that uh, wouldn't really hurt them in the long run. The whole second half of the game to go. So there's plenty more opportunities to gain points uh, in a worst case scenario like like this. So we, do we can uh, go for that Jesus clip. Can we just get to confirm that Zero Planes has not died yet, right? Uh, I have not seen any deaths. Ooh, Stewie tried to go for that Jesus clip and didn't have any luck this time, but he does have his Fire Flower as backup. And he did lose his bonus for no movements of four after that movement. That's the movement that caused it. If he landed Jesus clip, the fortress would have been broken. And he wouldn't have got that movement of four, so double edge right there. He just lost two there. If there's one thing that you've learned from running enough SMB3 is that you don't just get punished once. It always sets off a domino effect of other bad karma along the way. On top of that, the, the Hammer Bro is hiding behind level 5-9, so they'll also be getting additional movements of three. They decide to keep scrolling right to where 5-8 is. In the 5 8 Stewie gets through, um, you know, pretty much unscathed. Didn't take any damage from those spinies of Lakitu. Really nicely done. Stewie's going to be using his cloud just to skip over 5-9, which would ordinarily be a really long auto score, being really close to two minutes. be on his way to, to be fighting Roy Koopa in the World 5 airship.
So it looks like it looks like Zero Planes hasn't actually uh, collected a lot of points, but he did take damage, so he's not going to claim that that three flyer. But he has not died or used inventory items, so he is actually a good chunk lead ahead of Stewie because Stewie has lost his fire flower and died. So um, there's no there's no there's not going to be any kind of twist here with this. So really, it's just all about these six, seven, and eight points. It's all it's about right now. Indeed, a lot of these next uh, these next points that are going to be coming up are going to be contingent on having good sub pixel values because we're going to be seeing a lot of clipping, especially going into World Six and Seven. Going into World Six, none of them are going to have the reward of getting the um, holding onto that flower from World One. Um, but uh, the next awards to look out for are going to be the uh, the first try wall jump in level 6-9 and the potential floor clip in uh, 6-4-3. So those will be 0.5 and 1.5 points respectively. So we see Stewie finishing off uh, Roy Koopa, so he'll be the first going into 6-F-1. Once again, we see Zero Planes trying to take it a little bit carefully with the, the three stomp kill on Roy Koopa, but unfortunately we saw another bad hitbox interaction like we saw with the Chief Chiefs in 3-2, so unfortunately he just fell right through with the sprite and was able to, and that set off a, a little bit of damage as well. So thankfully this won't really be um, a big time loss. Um, he'll still be able to grab the leaf in the fort and still be able to do the damage boost in uh, over the spike bed. If you're able to get that damage boost over the spikes and um, you know just land safely where um, where that ride is, uh, it'll save you a good 10 seconds over just letting the lift uh, slowly carry you across. It's especially advantageous to be small in that second room, um, as you'll see. Our runners are going to grab the star, uh, pretty much run under the wall, carry their invincibility to boom boom for the quick kill. Fun little fact about the boom booms: they were never programmed to. Um, they would programmed to never have a kill state like most objects do, it's meant to be in a normal state. So Boom Boom was given 37 hit points, and killing him with five fireballs would set him to 32, and that's the value that triggers uh, his conversion into an orb. Uh, when he comes into contact with that star, I believe it sets him straight to zero, which is why we see that glitched out upside down orb. Uh, it's technically an overkill. I don't see uh, zero planes going for the damage boost. Maybe he's opting to do a clip in the wall. Maybe not. This one, I've seen zero planes go for the damage boost on the spike bed, but I, I can only imagine that he's probably got a little nervous in the context of this race. But he's able to get that star kill on Boom Boom, so only a couple seconds behind. Really not bad. He's doing a very good job keeping up with Stewie. So Stewie's going to be the first one going into 6-5. Uh, we're going to see our runners making some use of the P-Wing strats. And the name of the game here is especially to, is to go fast and clear a path for yourself uh, by whipping those Buster Beetles. And when he does that to run, uh, and run down the hill, he'll muster enough acceleration to trigger a sprite overload, uh, which in turn will cause the nippers to up top and despawn. Uh, normally that would be a puzzle gimmick level that would uh, make you carry a Koopa shell up to take them out, but this strat will allow you to bypass all of that. We'll see if Zero Planes is able to follow suit. Meanwhile, we see Stewie trying to, to pick up the cloud from the Hammer Bro fights. Planes, he runs down that hill and he gets the despawn. Really nice. All right, so 6F2. So for the second fortress in uh, World 6, uh, this would ordinarily be pretty time consuming because you have several of those horizontally moving thwomps that get in your way and uh, make you wait around. We circumvent all of that by taking the tail and, fly and flying through the underpass, and that P-meter allows you enough time to reliably get through two-thirds of the whole level. So we see Stewie going for the, the three-stomp kill on Boom Boom, and we'll see uh, how he decides to approach 6-8, and if he decides to go for that wall jump in six time, we're only about a minute away from, from seeing if he goes for it. Oh, we see uh, Zero Planes going for that cloud as well, and he'll be following suit with uh, 6-F2. 
So he's doing the runs through the hills, but he doesn't take a start as we would normally see for the subpixel manipulation. So we'll see uh, if it pays off for him or not. Again, still he wants to be on a subpixel value between zero and five. I can already see Mitch has, has his cursor on the trigger already. Does he get it? back and he gets it really nice that's a half point for stewie nice job on that first try wall jump right on. I, know, I can imagine stewie's really happy about that so but he's gonna want to be a little careful here oh he almost got nicked by that uh by that boo right there but it looks like he's getting ready to, um, he's grabbing a safety mushroom right in the beginning because he wants to go for that floor clip in 6F3. Is he able to get it? He tried to, but uh, unfortunately he overshot the jump just a slight bit. So he's unfortunately gonna have to go through that doorway. So um, if he was able to nail it, that would not only be 1.5 points, but if he was able to clip right into Boom Boom's room, that would um, allow him to bypass the elevator and save him a whopping seven seconds. We'll see if uh, how Zero Planes does with the, the wall jump. Does he get it? No, unfortunately, he had a bad sub-pixel. Ooh, two. We didn't even see him bump the wall before falling down. Three tries. And this time, four. Oh, he, that time he hit the pixel. Can, maybe fit try? No. Six try, maybe? No. And no. Maybe eight. Uh, he's just not hitting that pixel for some reason. But yeah, every time you do, every time you do uh, turn back to do another attempt at it, um, you don't know what your sub pixel value is at that point. Um, so it is effectively RNG right now, and he is just having the worst luck. Looks like a lot of his jumps are good. He, he's land, he's jumping where he's he has to be, but he has to do a full leap um, from that visual marker. So he hit the pixel twice. Uh, yeah, another another aspect of that wall jump is also having uh, good timing as soon as you come in contact with that wall. Because uh, even when you, even when you're in the um, in the condition to get it, there he goes. There he got it. But yeah, another condition to look out for is just how um, how you're timing that second jump. Because sometimes you get hit a little too early. That was actually a big mistake that I needed to correct when I was doing my practice sessions. So Zero Planes is making his way into 6F3. We see Stewie rounding up Lemmy in the, the World 6 airship. Zero Planes is small right now. I didn't imagine he was going to go for that 6F, um, this, the, the floor clip. So we saw some subpixel manipulation from Stewie. So is he going to go for the uh, the wall clip in 7-1? In, in is he going to get, get it first try? That's going to be our first ward coming into World 7. Does he get it? He tried to go for the duck clip. He set himself up for subpixel 0 through 6, but he... Went a little bit early, but he does get a third try. But unfortunately, he doesn't get any points for that. But he's still able to get out of there in a pretty timely fashion. I shall minute the holy subpixel. Then I shall clip on three. No more, no less. So Stewie went for the uh, the P-Wing strat going to the 7-2. I don't believe he had any stars in his inventory, so that was um, probably his second best case scenario. Uh, that P-Wing could have been used for 7-6 to fly over the wall, but he opted to... Um, since he's going for that reward anyway, it just makes sense for him to, uh, to do that clip anyway. So yeah, that's a very good backup strat on Stewie's end. Right, so we see Stewie making his way through 7-3 as Swamp Mario. He's um, pretty pretty straightforward level to get through, um, you know, just despite the hazards that are in your way. 
Uh, as long as you stay low to the ground, those jumping Koopas towards the end won't have a chance to hit you. So we'll be clouding over the uh, 7-4, and we'll be making our way over to 7-F1. So very soon we'll be seeing if um, what Stewie's next course of action is going to be. I can imagine he's going to be going for the 7-6 Wilkliffe. We'll see if he goes for 7-7 seven, seven shortly afterwards. So for those who are unaware of subpixel manipulation, uh, Mitch actually put out a really comprehensive video just explaining the process that um, that's involved with it. Uh, but basically, Stewie's going to want to have a subpixel value between uh, 3 and 10 in order to do the standing clip first try in 7-6. The zero planes get 7-1. He doesn't get it first try. We'll see how many attempts it takes this time around. Going for his fourth. Does he get it? No. Fifth, maybe? All right, we'll see how Stewie does with 7-6. I think he was a little bit late there. Yeah, as, far, as, as I mentioned before, um, if you're doing subpixel manipulation for levels like 7, 1, and 7, 6, um, knowing that knowing what value what value you have uh, is only um, is only important for going for that first try. But if you do miss it, um, every turn back that you do is going to effectively be RNG because you're just going to be rolling back and forth between 0 and 15, and you have no idea where you are. So um, everything else after that is a blind shot in the dark. Right, so I can imagine Stewie's probably going to want to rack up some additional points since he is um, one whole point behind right now. So uh, he probably doesn't know where Zero Planes is right now, but he's not going to take his chances. Does he go for 7-7? Seven, seven? He does. So we'll see how many tries it takes. Doesn't have to do it first try, just as long as he gets it. Ooh, that one was really close to the, pixel, uh, to the corner pixel, too. Maybe not. Let's, let's see it. Ooh, another close one. Come on, man. Ooh! Looks like he was close to hitting it. He just kind of chipped into the, the side of the pipe there. But he also doesn't want to enter that pipe because not only does he get not get the bonus, but he's also going to lose additional time just by having to, to do that star run. Good job maintaining that P-speed. He doesn't. He's not messing up his P-meter to the point where he has to continue winding back and forth. So he just wants to have a continuous stream of attempts. But he also wants to be conscientious and not allow Zero Planes an opportunity to catch up. Ooh, I don't know if he meant to go through that pipe or not, or if he wanted to continue going uh, as Louie did in our in the previous race. But yeah, it's also possible that Stewie just said, you know what, I had enough, I still want to maintain my lead, and honestly, I can't really blame him for that. A bad RNG indeed, everyone. You hate to see it. Looks like Zero Planes didn't have that much luck with uh, getting the first try 7-6, but he does get it in a pretty timely fashion, so uh, he was able to gain a little bit of time back. Now Stewie, his next objective is going to be to get the, the wall clip on the third and fourth uh, part of the maze. So it looks like he tried to go for the sweat clip right with the, with the P-Wink strats. Uh, this is normally done in 100%, but not really something that you uh, dwell on if you don't get it the first time around. But again, the... The name of the game is to clip wolves three and four on the bottom section of this maze. And we see Zero Planes just trying to follow suit. We'll see if he's able to get that 7-7 seven, seven clip. Didn't look like Stewie was able to get that clip third try, but he was able to get the swag on the upper section. On Zero Planes. Let's see that 7-7. Seven, seven. And now that Stewie has his Fire Flower that he got from 7-9, this is going to be a very crucial moment in his run for him because he wants to carry that Fire Flower and use it to take out Bowser at the end of the game. And that's going to award him an additional one point. And considering that he's one behind right now, um, he's, he's going to want to do everything, uh, everything that he can. Zero Planes actually nailed it, and he also nailed it first try, but got bad RNG. Holy crap, he has a big lead on Stu right now. He is not in the lead on time, but he's actually... This is an incredible race right now. 
That's that's a really good point as well. Because Sui has may have the lead on time, and he'll be able to gain additional points if he does come in first place, and if he's able to hold onto that fire until the end of the game. So even though um, even though Zero Planes is pretty much in the lead right now by a whopping two points, um, they're still very much within striking distance of each other. So it's not over till it's over. <laughs> Zero Planes got the third cliff. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get that fourth one, though. It's like Zero Planes is having a little bit of a uh, rough time in baby jail. But he's out of here. There's a question in chat. Anyone know offhand what finishing first and having a fire flower at the end is worth? So... In first place uh, in the race overall is uh, is two points, uh, but if you're able to carry that fire flower from World Seven to the end of the game, that's an additional one point. Then the, um, the race will also gain additional time depending on how much um, time they finish off with. So if they're sub hour but still like within like 54 to 59 minutes, then they'll gain one additional point. See uh, both of our runners on the 7-7 airship. Once again, like I mentioned, both within striking distance of each other. We'll see if Stewie decides to chance it with uh, a fire kill on Ludwig Koopa. I know he, he's done that in his speed runs, and he's very familiar with how the patterns work. Uh, but he, uh, considering that he really wants that fire, um, yeah, he might want to take it a little bit easier. Oh, unfortunately, um, yeah, I stand corrected. He was able to get the fire kill on Ludwig. Really nice job. Yes, that's correct, Herlox. Uh, Stewie still has an opportunity to, to save some time. I, I mean, to, to gain some time, uh, some points back in World Eight. So he can get Wrangless. He can get No Hands. Uh, he can get the clip in the uh, in Bowser's Castle. And if he's able to hold on to that fire for the the kill and finish off in first place, um, yeah, he could he could easily make that make that score back. I mean, whoever wins in terms of score for this race, it's not the end of the game so far. We still have another round two right after this, and we'll be seeing this all over again. I don't know about you guys, but this has been absolutely amazing tonight. This has been a lot of talent and on display between all of our racers tonight. So Zero Planes, I'm sure, isn't as familiar with the um, the Ludwig fighting patterns as Dewey was. So he, um, naturally, he's going to want to take it a little bit more carefully. He's able to get that three stun kill. Didn't have any issues with the hitbox like he did with Rory earlier. So he'll be moving on to, to World 8. And he, of course, like uh, like Stewie, he's going to want to hold on to that Fire Flower to maintain his lead. While we're joined by Speed Gaming 2 with their raid with a party of 20. So, welcome everybody who's just joining us in right now. Uh, what you're watching right now is the Super Mario Brothers 3 Warpless Point System tournament that was organized by Mitch Flower Power and hosted by Speed Gaming Events. So, for those who are just joining us and are interested, um, if you type in the command uh, exclamation SMB3, uh, all the tournament rules in the bracket and schedule are all going to be listed there. So, Although both of our racers are technically racing against each other, uh, this isn't a conventional race where the person with the highest, uh, the fastest time wins. Um, all of our racers are going to have objectives that they are going to do to, sco to score points. Didn't look like Stewie was able to get that Wranglist, though. Um, yeah, that, that bro was able to throw his boomerang that cost him an additional two seconds, so he didn't get any rewards from that. Right, so um, both of our races are pretty much one auto scroller apart. So Stewie is joining us right now in the Navy. Uh, 
Yeah, now that we're now that we're coming up on the hand bridge right now, we should we should start getting our guesses in. Chad, how, how many hands do you think that zero planes or Stewie are gonna get? I'm gonna say zero for both of them because I that's pretty much what I want from each of them. And we see someone who says four, maybe two, one, three. Zero gonna get two, one each. All right, guys, we'll see. A couple seconds away from wrapping up Boom Boom. Stewie doing a little bit of boat swag, swag right at the end, hoping that it'll give him some good luck with the RNG. Zero Planes almost had Rhineless, but um, yeah, unfortunately just missed the boat, no pun intended. In a witch, he's joining, he's, um, he's coming up on the Navy right now. Stewie got the 99% hand, so unfortunately he's going to have to maneuver his way past those bros, and hopefully, hopefully he doesn't take any damage along the way, and he will be able to get onto the Air Force as soon as possible. Hate to see it. Come on, Stewie. Oh, he gets the second hand. Um, if all, all of the hand levels are done optimally, the first hand will take about 16 seconds to complete, just in terms of in-game time. Plus, he, um, all of our racers lose additional time from uh, the one and a half second animation from the hand just pulling you into the level. And then when you factor in the... Um, and then when you factor in the screen transitions as you're moving across the map to the next one, getting all three hands could lose you up to a minute and four seconds. So it looks like Stewie lost about 40 just now just by having to play those two hands. But he doesn't have to play hand three, so he'll be making his way onto the Air Force. Still, ma still maintaining his Fire Flower. Doing a really good job, but he's not out of the woods just yet. Well, we'll see if um, how Zero Planes' his luck fares on the hand bridge. Ooh, had me excited for a minute. Skip those first two hands, but they got pulled in by the last one. Uh, Zero Planes is still hold on, holding on to his Fire Flower. He's going to want to be careful around those cheap jeeps, but not too careful to the point where one of them can just snipe him out at the last minute. But he's able to get out of there, so he'll be joining Stewie on the, um, on the Air Force. Meanwhile, Stewie's moving on to level 8-1. Uh, want to take a moment to snipe out these piranha plants like right on the ground and then just start building that peace speed right away. He's able to get that peace speed, he gets the bounce in, and he's able to stomp the Koopas, make his way past the, the bullet bills, and he is out of here. So, yeah, probably one of the scariest parts, especially of doing fire strats, is that because you don't have the hammer suit, you don't have an opportunity to snipe out the angry sun that's going to be coming up as soon as you start going downhill. So he's going to want to hope that he gets a, a good RNG pattern where he doesn't isn't put in immediate danger. And if he does, then he'll be able to react in time to um, to make his way over to safety. So he was almost able to maintain peace, uh, peace speed, but he wasn't able to land cleanly on the pipe. And yeah, those jump inputs were just a little bit off, but he gets through there unscathed. And that's at the end of the day, that's the most important part. Meanwhile, we saw um, Zero Planes took a little bit of damage, unfortunately, going through, uh, finishing up the Air Force. Will not get the, the World 7 power-up bonus uh, at the end of the game, but he will still have an opportunity to grab a fire in the fortress. I right, see Stewie coming up on the Super Tank. So this is going to be the Day 1 Affiliate Awaglib Super Tank Strat TM with a Vengeance. So Stewie's so just going to want to stay in the front row and then just start spamming those fireballs right away and those Rocky Ranchers will never have a chance to hit him. Oh, we see Zero Planes doing a really good job making his way through 8-1. But he's going to want to be a little bit careful here just to make sure he doesn't take any additional damage uh, from the Angry Sun. 
and some of the fire piranhas uh, that he'll inevitably have to be careful with along the way. But it looks like he's going to take the, the safety sand uh, to the bottom. He'll probably want to pick up a power-up or just bypass the angry sun altogether. Okay, so yeah, he's going to take the right-hand pipe. He won't get a power-up here, but he won't be needing it for, for what he's going for. So all he has to do is make it past per those piranhas and he'll be out of here as well. So we're coming up on the... Um, the last objectives in the game, just we'll see if he's able to uh, hold on to that fire to take out Bowser and if he's able to get that elevator clip uh, right in the beginning. So we'll have to keep our fingers crossed that he's on a good sub-pixel value. Does he get it? Uh, looks like he jumped a little bit late. He just went directly into that corner. He didn't really have a chance to firmly bounce that ceiling before hitting the wall, so... Yeah, timing could have been a factor, but it also could have just been um, some bad luck with the subpixels. So, gets the people's clip. He'll making his way over to the, the statue room. He's going to maintain some P-speed here. He gets that P-speed. See if he can carry it. Yeah, he can rebuild it back. Let's go. All right, he dodged that fireball. Let's take out Bowser. Hope he do Hopefully he doesn't get trolled by a bad pattern. We'll see. Here. Hi, Bowser. Bye, Bowser. Ladies and gentlemen, get your GGs out for Stewie Cartman. This is um this is a very interesting uh, part of the race right now. Stewie has finished in first place of time, kept his reward, and got above the uh, the 54 for the 60 minutes, giving him a total of 4.5. However, if Zero Planes gets the clip, uh, <laughs> he might win this race. Ooh, that damage there, though. I don't know. That might make him become over 60. What do you think, Teeks? Uh, where is he right now? He's um, he's got a minute and 15 on the super tank, so that should put him at about... Um, he's got three minutes you know, right close now, to, yeah. He's got close to a 58, and then he's going to lose about a minute and a half in Bowser's Castle because he's going to lose 40 seconds by not getting that... Um, by not getting that fire kill. So I think he'll still be in the 59s. I still think he'll be able to sub hour it, but we'll see, we'll see how he's he able can, to handle it. He can still win this. This is, this is crazy. Not over yet. This is the points tournament here, guys. This is it. This is incredible. If he gets the clip, that is really big for him. Because right now, you can see he's guaranteed second place. So he's got a 3.5. Right? If he gets the I'm clip... I think at this rate, it's going to be a mid-59. I think he'll be able to make it. <laughs> oh my god! No way! Did he just... Ooh. He just took game one! He's got to go, though. He just... He just... Clip. He does not have time to mess around. Oh, zero planes, go! Oh my gosh! <laughs> no! Move your butt, dude! You're winning! <sighs> Points tournament, bud! Peace, baby, you can still do it. Okay, I think... I think he's got Only it. a couple seconds. Holy crap! It's all in Bowser's hand right now. This is all Bowser right now. It stomps away. Four. Seven. Seven. Oh my gosh! He got the clip! That clip won him at that point five, Or else it was a tie. It's never over until it's over. That's right. It's not over yet. Don't fall down that hole. Wow! Holy crap! What is that? Is that they both 4.5s? Nope. I cannot believe that! Unbelievably close, right to the very end. Ladies and gentlemen, get your GGs out for Zero Planes and Stewie Carmen. Both races did a fantastic job and they put on a hell of a show. And the best part is it's not even over yet. We still have one more race to go. Holy, what an end. I knew these points would do something like that at the end. That is the most clutch thing I had ever seen.
This is exactly what you had in mind when you designed this tournament, didn't you? It's that this is exactly what I had in mind. Incredible. I think at this point, um, I'm sure both of our racers are going to want to take a minute, just take a breather, go to the bathroom, do what they have to do, and then we'll be we'll be back again shortly. Yeah, sure. Uh, hold on, hold on there, guys. Uh, go grab a drink, go kiss your loved one, go to the bathroom, stretch it out. We are going to play some a uh, little bit of music here, and uh, let you guys go. Um, let you guys go do what you got to do. Okay. So we're going to go to a page, and we're going to take a one second break here. Welcome back, you guys. What's going on? Is it me updating the challenge? It is me doing everything with my awesome colleagues. We got Teeks. We got Zero Planes with the tracker. We got Gino with the art. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, but for the most part, I am moderating the entire thing, yes. So, for anyone wondering, it is the combination of total points for both races. So right now, that means Zero Planes has a lead of 0.5. Incredible. Not dying and not using any stars really, really gave him that advantage. Uh, that is uh, that is fantastic. But we're going to move on to race two. I'm going to make sure the runners are ready. And we are going to be... Uh, we are going to be uh, followed with Teeks again. We're going to have Teeks doing round two as well. He did such a good job last time. We're going to have him do it again. We're going to have him come out and uh, do the same thing. Okay. Confirm ready. We got the dot ready. Now we're going to get the confirm ready. Okay. On three. On go. On three. Okay. Here we go. We got three, two, one, go. Right on. All right. Take it away there, Teeks. All right. Thanks again, Mitch. Um, yeah, just once again, I'm Teeks88. I'm also a fellow participant in this tournament. And I will be filling in for commentary for game two of this match between Zero Planes and Stewie Cartman. As was mentioned before, Stu, um, Zero Planes took the first race by um, by 0.5 points. So the final score was 5 to 4.5. So it's still very, very close. Still a very good opportunity for, for Stewie to do some catching up in terms of score. So looks like Zero Planes took a little bit of damage in 1-1s. One but um, yeah, thankfully, he um, if there's any place you want to take damage in the game, uh, you want to do it right in the beginning, so uh, it doesn't affect your opportunity to grab that first uh, Fire Flower bonus for three points later on in the game. So, so even though um, I think these racers are technically racing, time is only going to be a secondary factor. It'll still be important, though. But yeah, it, um, the points are going to be what matters the most, and time is only um, you know just a uh, just a part of that in the in the long run. So we're going to be seeing uh, uh, the first fort right now. Believe it or not, a lot of the, there's going to be a lot of technical strats just in SMB3 in general, just in the first few levels of the game. Stewie took a little bit of damage from that rotor disc, so he wasn't able to fly up to the ceiling to get that whistle, which would save him time over just doing the boom boom fight. But since he has no other opportunity to grab that leaf because that first question mark block uh, gives him a fire flower. So he's going to lose a bit, little bit of time there. But nevertheless, they're still very close in time with one another. So we'll see if Zero Planes, uh, who's going to 1-5 first, we'll see if he's able to get that MFP tunnel. He's got his well-timed jumps, got the P-speed back. Does he do it? 
oh, he missed that duck input. We saw he ducked for just a slight moment, and then it just released just as he was in, uh, going into the air. Some really early hammer bro RNG, so that saved him a little bit of time. We'll see if he's able to get the, the tunnel. Gets the jump, he gets the P-speed. Does he do it? Gets the duck jump, and he gets it. He gets the tunnel. Really nice job, Stewie. Stewie entering uh, 1-6, so, um... So now Zero Planes is entering the uh, the Hammerbro fight, so we picked up the star, and he'll be the first one going into uh, into the World 1 airship. So he'll have an opportunity to grab the Fire Flower here. As I was mentioning before in the, the previous race, um, you, know, you know, since we have the time with the additional auto scroller, uh, it's worth noting that these bosses are coded with a, a small handful of fixed fighting patterns. So, for example, they may jump the moment you enter the fight. They could uh, they could shoot their wand right away, or they could just walk uh, towards you for a few seconds before doing anything else. And this matters because knowing what pattern you get will indicate how you should go um, and approach fire killing them. And it will be a recurring theme for to see our runners um, probably go for those because optimal fights do save about two or three seconds over jumping on their heads three times. Uh, and the pattern you get is determined by a timer which starts from the last level you completed to the frame upon which you enter the pipe. And the patterns operate on a rotation which shifts every couple of frames. So it's not unusual to see experienced runners deliberately delay on the overworld map or, uh, or the pipe entry to manipulate for a more desirable pattern. But thankfully with Larry, there's not really that many patterns where you can't just um, approach the fire kill a uh, consistent way. So as long as you're not getting an early jump, you could pretty much uh, do it the exact same way. So really nicely done. Both of our racers are neck and neck going into, into World 2. Very slight lead because he was able to get that tunnel, but we still have some more uh, object objectives coming up um, just very shortly. So the next, the, the next one they're gonna wanna go for is in level 2-2, and I can explain that more uh, as soon as we get to it. First off, they're going to want to go into 2-1. They're going to want to do some pretty straightforward P-Speed strats right in the beginning. Um, you know, just do a rub against that block uh, while maintaining P-Speed, stomping out the enemies on the ground, and then make that leap onto the second note block. And it's always worth being wary of that Fire Snake because it can easily troll you if you're not being careful, uh, if you're too late with your inputs. Uh, World 2 generally has a lot of levels that don't require a Fire Flower to clear optimally, but you always want to hold on to it long enough to at least Fire Kill Boom Boom uh, in the fort. And that's yeah, um, level two dash two. That's exactly what happened to Zero Planes there. He did lose his fire flower there uh, from that fire chomp. Um, he doesn't get that point anymore though, so this is could be the the kind of swing that they need. That's a very good point as well. But yeah, the the next objective would have been to go into level two dash two and get a two ninety two timer on the pipe. And that's achieved by uh, maximizing your acceleration as soon as you slide down that first hill in the beginning of the level, and then just carrying it with you as you're boarding those platforms. But in order to conserve the speed as much as you can, um, the best thing, the the best course of action would be to do is uh, jump as soon as you come in contact with the ground, so you don't lose extra acceler you don't lose that speed from the drag you get on the ground. So Stewie unfortunately got the 291. So both of our races are neck and neck. They're pretty much in sync right now going into that four. Just got word from chat that uh, Zero Planes got a 290 on the timer. All right, so we're gonna be coming up on 2-3. So Stewie once again is going for that red rocket, just grabbing that uh, that red Koopa shell right in the beginning. Uh, generates a little bit of lag uh, frame um, as he's making his way across because there's just so many objects on the screen. But you can see just how fast that red shell is traveling as he's um, as it's making its way back and forth. So he's able to get a 287 on that timer just slightly faster than you would ordinarily be able to. Uh, it's, looks a little bit risky going for it, but Stewie's done it uh, a lot of times, so he does get rewarded with those couple frames. 
planes, meanwhile, going the slightly more conventional route, but still getting through there no problem. So we'll be making our way through over through the Angry Sun level, everybody's favorite. You just want to start building that peace speed right away. Just carefully execute your jumps so you can make your way over that tornado. And as long as you're on those same rows of blocks, uh, you don't have to worry about coming into contact with the sun. So, piece of cake. Start, uh, just, just get used to the mechanics of the game in the first place, just because you have so much open space to run around. So, Zero Plane's making his way through 2-5, and this basically... Um, Entails just making small meticulous jumps to avoid the obstacles in your way, like those pipe, uh, like those chain chomps out of the gate, and the Koopas later on. Really nicely done. Stewie's in the in the pyramid right now. So, yeah, there's two main strats to, to look out for. The first of which is just boosting past that first block wall by running into it with the Buzzy Beetle, and then throwing it at the wall with just enough space between you to duck and sneak by. And you have those iframes to just um, to just go right under there without taking any damage. It looks like Zero Plane's had a little bit of bad bro RNG, so he's going to have to chase that hammer a little bit more around the map. So it cost him a couple seconds, uh, but he still has an opportunity to pick up a, a mushroom in the pyramid and then the fire flower on the, on the airship. So he still has an opportunity to go for the next objective, uh, which is going to be to get a fire kill on Morton Koopa with a 221 or more on the timer. Yeah, Stewie actually got a, the post 2-3 early hammer there. Um, so a lot of people are wondering in chat why he went to that music box. When he finished 2-3, uh, he saw the Hammer Brother move over on the Mushroom House and go back. So he knew that um, within one more turn, the Hammer Brother could actually move over to give him the post 2-3. So he went to fight the music box to cause him to try and maybe come over. And it ended up actually working. And the Hammer Brother with the hammer came over and he nailed that uh, post 2-3. Uh, can you guys still hear me? We might have lost uh, Teeks due to some internet issues. Might have lost Teeks. I think you guys can still hear me, right? Yep, okay. Well, I'll take over and uh, we'll wait for him to uh, kind of come back. He'll let us know. So, Stewie, Stewie got the 221 there, which is fantastic. And we're going to see if Zero Planes can get it. I don't think so, though, because it looked like he took damage on the pyramid. He's not going to be able to actually get that, unfortunately. But it happens. All right, everyone watch Stewie right now. Is he going to get the first frame jump? Not happening. Not happening. Now nah, you can't hear me? Don't lie to me. Yeah, we're just... Uh, just give it a little minute. I'm going to... I'll end the call with Teeks. Let's see and make sure... Uh... He'll, he'll say something when he comes back. The uh, coronavirus has gotten into our internet lines, so we all have to watch out for that. Zero Plane's not being able to snag that time there uh, due to not having Fire Flower. Very unfortunate. Um, but it happens. Stewie not getting P-Speed in 3-2. Uh, Eight to see it, right guys? Eight to see it. Yeah, nice try, you guys. Nice try, not gonna work on me. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. As if a neighbor didn't set fire to Teeks's car, I think that'd be pretty good. Yeah. He'll say something when he comes back. All right, Zero Planes not getting the first frame jump, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't know that 1 60th of a second uh, would be overly difficult, but it's pretty hard. Okay, it looks like Stewie. Stewie looks like he's not putting up for any crap this race. He died the last race. Do not think he's having a good time this race. Yeah, Teeks is losing a little bit of uh, uh, internet there, so we'll see. He's he'll probably uh, he'll he'll give me a call back whenever he gets a chance. Uh, his internet might have refreshed or died. Oh, Stewie not getting door three. A chance for zero planes to uh, spruce that up there. 
Uh, Stewie has also not taken any damage yet, so this would be really good for Stu. Zero Planes has taken damage, which means he might actually be able to, uh, you know, take some risks here. You know, Jesus Clip. I was, I was got to watch out for the Jesus Clip. We did watch in last race, uh, Zero Planes single-handedly won because he stuck true with the 7-7, so... We're gonna see how this goes. Stewie got runaway, so he's gonna opt to skip the uh, hammer bro at the bottom, which is actually a very bad idea. He does not remember that he used this hammer in World 2, which means he won't have a hammer for World 6. If he does not go back and get that hammer, he is going to lose himself over a minute and a half of time. Let's see if he remembers. Remember, he used this hammer in World 2. He does not have a hammer. So if he does not get this hammer brother down there, he is actually... He's... He remembered. He remembered. He's going back. He better not be listening to the stream right now. All right, let's see. Uh, Zero Plane's going to go for the door three here. Oh! Zero Plane's gets the door three! Holy crap! They are currently tied right now with points. Oh my gosh, Zero Plane's is really clutching it, guys. He's He's clutching some of these things out here. However, zero, don't don't do the duck zero planes. Okay, as long as he doesn't duck in the water. All right, Stewie forced to do the auto scroller here. Very unfortunate, but he doesn't want to take the death. If you take the death, you lose the reward. And it's it's funny too because uh, Stewie actually um, had the music box. We could have used it at some point in World uh, Three, uh, but you never know. All right, if Hammer Brother moves back, that is good for Zero Planes. The Hammer Brother does not move back. He should and could take the death here. Actually, I don't think he should. That's right, he shouldn't. There we go. Hello. Hello. We are joined back by Teeks. All right, guys, Teeks is going to take the reins again. See you later. And my apologies again for the technical difficulties. My internet must have crapped out at some point, but it's good to be back. All right, so looks like Stewie just rounded up level 3-6, and he's not making the same mistake that I made in my exhibition race when I just got eaten by boss bat because I just couldn't jump out of the water right away. So he's still holding on to that fire. Ah, I saw that. Really nicely done. something you love to see. And it looks like Stewie tried to go for that age jump and once again just overshot one of his jumps so he lost a little bit of time but thankfully he doesn't get any um, points to penalize from him for that. So he only lost about, about five seconds but in the long run that's really not a big deal. Right, Zero Planes making his way through 3-8. I mean, you see just Boss Bass looming right around. You know he's hungry. But he's able to take him out with that white block. And he's able to maintain consistent rhythm across the water. Ooh, looks like he missed his jump right at the last minute. So he's just trying to get right back on top. And he's able to do it. Very nice. Very nice recovery. Meanwhile, we see Stewie coming up on the um, the World 3 airship. So he'll, be, he'll have an opportunity to, to go for the Windy Fire Kill. But um, with the, the 210 on the timer, so that would give him a 0.5 uh, point bonus if he's able to get it. Um, but considering he tried to play it safe um, in his previous race, I can't really predict that he's going to go for it this time around, especially since he's still holding onto the, that potential three points. Um, so, but I, he could he could just choose to surprise me and prove me wrong. Uh, meanwhile, we see Zero Planes making his way through 3-9. Does he get the H jump? He's going for it. He's set up for it. He gets it. Very nice. Right on. So once again, both of our races are neck and neck. Only a 0.5 uh, discrepancy between the, their two scores on the board right now. So it's still very much anybody's game.
Uh, just as I had imagined, Stewie was not going to go for that um, that Wendy bonus. Um, yeah, that holding onto that fire is pretty much uh, too important for him at this point. So I really can't blame him, especially if he doesn't really feel confident in just trying to adapt to the different kind of patterns and things that Wendy can throw at him. Uh, doesn't want to repeat the repeat the mistakes that uh, Louis made, just getting cornered in on the left hand side and then just get walled in by those rings. It's it could happen to pretty much anybody. We see Zero Plane's making his way onto the onto the airship right now. He has already taken damage at this point, so we might see uh, an opportunity for him to go for it. Uh, we'll see if he's able to capitalize on that instead and just try to tie things up. I always see Stewie in 4-1. He's trying to go for the, the safe peace speech strat with the shell, but unfortunately he got frame ruled right at the last minute, so he wasn't able to get that peace speed, but he just barely avoids taking damage and he's able to carry his way all the way across the clouds and the platforms, and he'll be making his way over to 4-2. Meanwhile, we see Zero Planes on the other hand. He's just about to enter the pipe for Wendy. Does he go for it? Come on, let's see. He's going for it. Two stomps. Oh, he gets hit by the ring. But she's in the air. He gets it. Her rings were out. He gets the kill on the timer. Very nicely done, Zero Planes. So even though he took a little damage along the way, He's, um, yeah, they're tied 2.5 each. So it's still very much anybody's game. Ah, oh, that's awesome. All right, so we're coming up on 4-3 on Stewie's side, one of my favorite uh, levels to watch. So it's, it's one of those things where as long as you know the, the level layout well and uh, all the surrounding houses along the way, everything can just uh, flow really well in terms of execution from all the really well-measured jumps and just maintaining that P-speed all the way through. Really nicely done. Up on 4-1, Zero Planes has a little bit of damage to the advantage going into, into World 4 because he doesn't have that Fire Flower. Uh, he won't have an opportunity to get the... Um, you won't be able to get the, the quick uh, 4F1 uh, because he won't be able to get a Fire Flower until he gets to 4F2 or if he decides to take a pit stop in 4-5, uh, which would be the slower level between that and 4-6. Stewie coming up on 4-4. Is he able to hold on to that fire? He gets the P-Speed. He doesn't do the duck jump strat, but he's able to maintain his rhythm within the water real quick. He's able to take out Lakitu. So he's going to do that power swim. Does he avoid the spiny egg? Ooh, just barely missed it. Oh, uh, he's not going to get that three-point uh, advantage going into, into World 6. Wow, this is incredible, the last five minutes. Anticipated that Spiny Egg was going to be there, and just right at the last minute, that turn back just debated him from off-screen. That you absolutely hate to see. I, I've been in that position so many times, so I, I deeply sympathize. 4-4 four, four, four can be such a gatekeeper in Warpless, just because of the, the time repercussions that come with having to re-grab a power-up at, at any point. We see uh, Zero Planes following suit in level 4-3. He's able to um, maintain steady flight. Ooh, but he took a little bit of damage from that spiny that dropped down. He jumped a little bit too early and get, got nicked by a corner pixel. But we see a fire re-grab in 4-F2. He won't be able to get the P-Speed stride over Donut Lifts. But he's able to carry it to Boom Boom, and he'll be able to know in advance um, how many movements he gets from the Hammer Bro fights. He's able to avoid that Star Bro, so he doesn't get penalized. He does the music box uh, right before he entered 4F1, uh, 4F2, so uh, considering the time that um, the little bit of delay on the map before he He's able to get control of Mario again. He knows that he's going to be on a movement of one pattern. So he knows that uh, Iggy is going to stand by, um, you know, just stand on the right hand side of the, the platform uh, and allow him enough time to get those fireballs uh, into him. So he'll be, he'll be on, he'll be set to get a, a quick fire kill on him. While we see Zero Planes uh, following suit, using making good use of that music box. 
So um, those Hammer Bros will still be asleep by the time he finishes 4-6. So we just have to make sure that um, that last bro that was right there just doesn't camp out right in front of 4-F2 and they can do any additional fights that he doesn't want. Making good use of that backup star just to, you know, iframe his way through those Koopas. Really nicely done. Still able to get through there in a timely fashion. And he'll have an opportunity to grab the, the fire in 4-F2. Once again, we find uh, Stewie on the, um, you know, one of the slowest airships and the longest ones in the game. So it clocks in at a little over two minutes. So now it's definitely a good opportunity to, you know, just grab a couple snacks, uh, go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. And our next set of rewards going into uh, to World 5. And worth emphasizing again, both of these guys are, you know, you know, even though there's a slight time gap between them, um, they're both pretty much tied up in terms of score, so it's still very much anybody's game. Alright, so Stewie's all set up for that movement of one pattern that he got from that music box timing. So, does he do it? Ooh, he missed one of those two fireballs, and yeah, if you... Yeah, he's gonna... Not only takes damage, he takes it in a really ugly spot, which um, he won't be able to get any fire back until he gets in, back into level 5-7. So he's going to be fireless for a good portion of World 5. But yeah, unfortunately, he missed one of those fireballs, and he needs at least three um, shot into Iggy before he does the, fo the follow-up stomp and then starts start shooting seven more into him to, to finish him off. But yeah, he only got two and tried to go for um, an eight fireball fi follow-up, and yeah, it just... Kind of punched him in the end. While we see uh, zero planes with a proper coin count going into the World 4 airship. Very nice. Do we opt it to, to grab the uh, the leaf so we can just damage boost past those nippers? If I was him, I probably would have held onto it a little bit longer and then used that as an opportunity to damage boost, um, you know, so we can have P speed going towards the hills at the end of 5 2. But he's going to do what he did last race and just do the end spade game. And he knows the permutations for the, the card arrangements really well. Uh, so he could pretty much guarantee that he'll have a Fire Flower backup when he decides to go for Jesus Cliff. And so his next objective is to not fall in the shaft. But he's done this so many times, I doubt he'll have any issues with it. He does not. So he does not get any uh, 0.5 uh, penalty from doing the Fall of Shame. And he does not lose an additional 16 seconds from that lower section where the waterfall is. Zero planes rounding up the Iggy fight, still maintaining that 69 coin count. While well, we see Stewie coming into uh, level 5 F1. Getting that movement so we... of 4 right there, so he's not going to get that reward. Shucks, man. Shucks. Shucks, indeed. So yeah, the first fort in World 5 is pretty easy in terms of execution. You just want to make your way onto the lower levels to make your way across the Ragu. And then once you build that initial P-Speed, it's very easy to navigate past those swamps in the road of this uh, towards the doorway. That's three stomps on Boom Boom, and he's out of here. Five one is not really a level that you see um, zero planes, I mean, yeah, he's finishing that up right now. It's not really a level you see P-Speed utilized in very much. Uh, not typically until the end, unless you're on flat ground. Uh, usually you just want to make your way up those steps without taking any damage, and then just fall straight down from the two-tile platform and make a clear path by uh, running and sniping those two nippers on the bottom. So we'll see if he is able to avoid the shaft fall as well. He does. Barely nicked by that Koopa as it was falling down. So he does have a, technically has an opportunity to re-grab the fire in this level by going down the pipe, but it's going to cost him a little bit of extra time. But it's, he's uh, choosing to forego that option, so uh, like Stewie, he's probably going to be holding off until 5-7 to re-grab it. Um, both racers both have their no-death bonus. 
So who knows if they're going to uh, take that gamble and go for the Jesus clip, or if they're just going to conserve the two and a half points that they already have. Remember, every point five points is ve very much valuable, considering how difficult that a lot of these objectives are to achieve. F4 is a pretty straightforward level in terms of execution. That first platform you're on is just long enough to build P-Speed, and you're going to want to carry it with you past those spinners and the wooden blocks that come up. No problem here. He's wrapping up 5F1. Three stomps on Boom Boom, and he's out of there as well. It looks like... Um... Yeah, Stewie decided not to do the turn back strat to gain early P-Speed in level 5-5. It looks like he was trying to jump over this Koopa so that he could grab the, the Leaf right there. And he's going to use that as an opportunity to damage boost uh, in 5-7 in order to have a easy access to the Fire Flower while ma maintaining P-Speed, as we'll be seeing soon. The 0.5 point bonus from not going for any inventory stars. So this is probably a really good backup to do instead. So he has a really good jumping cue. Uh, he loses that P-Speed because he just didn't jump high enough while bouncing that wooden block. Uh, but he's able to get through there pretty seamlessly. So we'll see. Keep your fingers crossed that he'll get that Jesus clip. It's going to be his first, first death in the game, and he's going to lose him not only that one point bonus, but 0.5 for every death. So he has a lot on the line right now. Does he do it? He goes for it. He gets it! Nice job! Holy crap! First Jesus clip of the tournament so far. Let's get your pogs and GGs after Stewie right now. He just got three points from that Jesus clip. He took a gamble and it paid off. All right, right on. So Zero Plains is making his way through 5-4 as well. So he gets the P-Speed right away. He's able to navigate past the Waterfall and those spinners. And he'll be making his way over to 5-5. Ooh, and he just barely miscalculates the jump. It looks like um, he got a little bit trolled by that uh, spinner's physics and then just fell right over. So he lost that uh, the Deathless bonus, and he loses an additional 0.5 just for that death alone. So, yeah, things, um, things really took a wild twist in just a couple of seconds. Wow. They went from being tied to going for, uh, to a, a four and a half point gap between them. You absolutely hate to see it. All right, right on. So Stewie's finishing up um, World 5 right now. So he's going to be encountering Roy Koopa along the way. So he's still holding on to that Fire Flower. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the Fire Flower he needs in to, to maintain in order to get the three-point bonus from World 6, which is why he probably went for that Jesus Clip in the first place. He'll still at least have an opportunity to do a convenient damage boost in 6F1 and get the Fire Kill on Roy should he decide to do so. So, not just a couple levels behind now, uh, but he's going to have an opportunity to re-grab the Fire Flower in 5-7. And then we'll see if he's able to follow suit and go for the Jesus Clip as well. Because if he's able to pull it off, we're able to see two Jesus Clips in one race. Not only would that be highly unlikely, but really awesome, but it'll allow him a really good opportunity to catch up and put him right back in the game. We'll see if he decides to do it. So far, so I can imagine that he's probably inclined to do so. Come on, Zero Plane, let's see it. Will we get another one? Ah, oh, he decides to bail on it. I can't really blame Zero Planes, um, even though he probably wouldn't only, he would only lose no more than uh, additional 0 .5, sec, uh, 0.5 points from that. He doesn't have any idea what kind of lead or disadvantage he has right now. So he, considering that he knows how valuable every point that he can possibly get is, he probably wanted to, to just conserve as much as he can right now and then just try to make it back up in the, the latter half of the game. So yeah, it's really interesting to see what the different mentalities are between all the racers when they come up to that point in the game. Not only do you have to have good subpixels going into that level, but um, so your execution when you're going into that, that duck jump into the corner uh, can also play a role as well. 
because you could be on the right sub pixel, but if you're too far on the blocking, then before you do that run and jump, um, that could also just not work out in your favor. I find that, you know, just from my own experiences that um, when, when you do a big jump and then just land on the, you know, that just that top right corner pixel on that second platform, that more than more than often least, it just sets you up um, just as you need to in order to get the clip. But it, it's, it's a lot to bank on, especially when you're under the pressure of a, a tournament resetting. And I bailed on both of my Jesus clip opportunities in my races uh, just two days ago, so I can't really... I can't rip anyone else for doing the same. Meanwhile, we see uh, Stewie rounding up uh, 6F1. He's able to get that nice star kill on Boom Boom. So we'll be making our way over to 6-4. So we'll see if he's, if he's able to get that magic pixel in order to get uh, an opportunity for some early P-Speed. Uh, doesn't look like he's taking his, his chances this time. Points here. He's still able to avoid the coin ship spinners and he is out of here so uh, his next objective is going to be the um the six nine wall jump so he still has a couple levels before he gets to that point so we'll see if he's able to get that despawn on the nippers in the upper section of six dash five so once again we're going to be seeing some p speed strats going on So um, there's a question in chat, um, what does zero planes need to do in order to win? Uh, there was actually, there's actually going to have to be a lot that goes on in order for things to swing down in any, uh, you know, just swing in another direction. Um, for one, I mean, four and a half points is a pretty huge gap in order to contend with. So not only would he have to go for a lot of those bonuses that are in uh, World 6, 7, and 8, um, but he might also have to count on Stewie uh, taking a couple deaths along the way. And considering, um, you know, just the kind of wild twists and turns that you have under pressure of a, a tournament race, uh, anything is possible. So it's never over until it's over. Zero Planes did, uh, contrary to what he did in, uh, in his first race, he actually decided to for, uh, go for the, uh, the double damage boost on the spike bed this time. And now he's going to go for that star kill on Boom Boom. Uh, he has his iframes. He has the, the the good time frame. He'll be able to get it. All right, nicely done. So Stewie is uh, just rounded up 6-8. Does he go for that wall jump? We'll see. Does he get it first try? That's the question. Well, ooh. There's a very good op there's a very good chance that he was on the right sub pixel the first time, but because he bumped that um, that first ice block right as he entered the level, that probably put him on a bad sub pixel. So it's kind of hard to to tell if he was able to get it first try or not. But he's still able to get out of there in a you know pretty quickly. Second try is not bad at all, nothing to scoff at at all. Not get an additional bonus from that. He gets a Fire Flower right away, because uh, I do believe he picked it out of his inventory when he went for that end spade card game. So yeah, that was probably a good opportunity just as a backup in case he took damage from the the, the spike bed when he was going for that um, the one and a half point bonus. Uh, looks like he overshot the jump a little bit, so um, you know, at the very least he'll be able to get a quick fire kill on Boom Boom, saving him an additional two or three seconds. All right, Zero Planes looked like he was just taking a moment to see which Hammer Bro was the, the correct one that he needed to fight. As long as the Hammer Bro um, that faces left when the music, when the overworld music starts playing, you'll know that that one's going to be the cloud. All right, so he's able to skip that Star Bro. Really nice. Really lucked out with some good RNG there. So now it's Zero Planes' turn to fly under the underpass. He 
He's able to hold on to his tail and to, to do a nice damage boost. Still gets out there pretty cleanly. And now that we're pretty much in the, the process of wrapping up World 6, uh, it's probably worth noting that Zero Planes took, um, you know, just took another death along the way uh, as he was making his way over to 6-5, so that widened the gap a little bit between he and Stewie, so once again, it's um, there's still a whole lot of the game left. Uh, he still has an opportunity to come back, uh, but he's probably in a much tighter uh, position than he would otherwise prefer to be. Kind of gets an age jump along the way. He does take damage, um, probably intentionally, from that nipper. Uh, he wants to go into 6 9 as small Mario, so he's going to go for that um, for the wall jump as well. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. So let's get those bless RNGs out in chat. We'll see if he's able to get that wall jump. First try. That's that's the name of the game. Does he get it? Ooh, he hit the right pixel, but he jumped a little bit too early. Ah, oh, feels bad. Ooh, and he gets a third try. Still not bad at all. That's a really good point, Chad. He um, yeah, he got him in a much quicker time than he did last um, last race, where I think it took him about 14 attempts in the first race. You know, you know coming back with three is uh, definitely a very nice improvement. Two might have been practiced, but it was the first one that counted the most. It looked like Stewie was able to get that first try in the 7 1 clip, but he's still able to get there pretty quick. So Stewie has the advantage of a Fire Flower going into 7-2, so he's able to take out that Nipper on the ground right away without having to take any additional steps. Gets the traditional P-Speed strat, really nicely done. Just really nicely, really good job just avoiding the Piranhas uh, and the Nipper right on the right towards the end. Your Plains is going to be entering the, uh, the World 6 airship now, where he's going to be fighting Lemmy, and he's going to be joining Stewie very shortly in World 7. So he's going to have an opportunity to grab a Mushroom, um, you know, so we can become big Mario, and that'll allow him the opportunity to go for those 7-1 clips as well. But it's going to be incredibly crucial for him to not take damage when he's fighting Lemmy. Alright, so Stewie's going to be coming up in 7F1, so he's gonna, we're going to once again use some P-Wing strats just to bypass the need to go for, you know, just do any arduous process to get the Tanuki suit. So he'll have a nice early access to Boom Boom Fight, and he's going to be setting up most likely for some sub-pixel manipulation so we can try for the first try clip in 7-6. It's really weird for this uh, particular level because um, I had no idea that acceleration frames were a thing. Uh, and some pixels are treated differently when you complete a fort uh, compared to if you just did uh, another level. And he's able to nail it first try. So he got the sub pixel between 3 and 10, and he jumped right at the right time. So he gets that mac and cheese. He gets that additional 0.5. Awesome job. And then he's rounded up 7 6. Does he go for 7 7 again? He still has a, a very solid lead if he, if he decides to go for it. And he's got it. Stewie Swagman going for everything. I love it. Oh, just really overshot that jump that first time. Second one was a little bit closer. Oh, zero, zero planes going right now for the 7 1 clip. So much action going on right now. I can't keep up. I think Zero Planes is um, having some a bit of a mix between some really good attempts where his head is going into the wall uh, with some bad RNG involved with the subpixels, and sometimes his jumps are just uh, plainly a little bit late. It looks like Stewie, uh, I couldn't tell if he ended up giving up or he accidentally entered the pipe. 
But uh, at this point, he has no choice but just to uh, just proceed all the way through. I'm sure he just didn't want to spend more time than he really needed to. Um, once again, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know what his lead is right now. Uh, but he's not going to take any chances. He still has more opportunities to, to pick up uh, points in 7-9 and from the rewards he could potentially get in World 8. Again, Zero Plane is still struggling with that 7-1 clip. He's doing a lot of side swipes and just jumping way too early right now going into that corner pixel. That's it. Yeah, 7-1 is a really stressful, especially in any particular speed run. It's very precise, especially when you're doing the standing clip, because you only have that one frame in order to get that pixel. Oh, Stewie's going for those clips in 7-9. Does he get it? He's on wall 2 right now. So this isn't what he needs right now. So he's going to skip over it. He's going to go back up and around to get to, to, to wall number 3. And we'll see if he lucks out. He's just bailing on it all together. So once again, he's going to choose to go through 7F2. It's a pretty scary level, especially when you're holding onto your Fire Flower from World 7, and you need that bonus to get to Bowser's Castle. But he's going through one of the more dangerous levels in the game, um, when he did have the opportunity to cloud it, but it is 10 seconds faster if he decides to do that over the, the World 8 Fort. Ooh, and he gets a nice P-Speed Strat in the underpass uh, in the second room. And he is out of here. Really awesome job, Stewie. All right, so Stu uh, Zero Planes is finishing up uh, level 7-3. So he's going to be clouding uh, through 7-4. And then he's going to be setting up um, for the wall clip in 7-6 after he finishes the fort. So we'll see what kind of luck he has while Stewie is making his way through the, uh, the two-minute airship in World 7. So we... Again, we're going to use that P-Wing just to get straight over to the Boom Boom Room. Three stomps and he'll be out of here. So we'll see what kind of luck that um, that Zero Planes has going into these clips. Does he get it? A couple pixels back and forth. I couldn't really tell if uh, his execution was right, so we'll see in a moment. Does he get it? On 7-6 clip, you need this. He gets it! Nice job! Mac and Cheese 7-6 from both of our racers. Good job. Planes needs as many of these points as he can get, so getting that clip was definitely a step in the right direction. And I think at this point it would be a good opportunity for him to go as for as many things as he possibly can. Seven. All he has to do is hit that corner pixel on the, on the right sub-pixel, and he is pretty much out of there. Free every time. He had a... Ooh, he just barely chipped the corner pixel. It looked like he got it, but then just kind of fell right off. It wasn't going to let him in at any rate, so... He needs to get into that wall. That was really close attempt, too. Good attempt. Ooh, a little too early. Come on, Zero Planes, you can do this. Come on, Zero Planes, come on. Just trying to get an idea of what Zero Planes, um, how he feels about his progress in the run right now. Like if he feels like he's ahead or behind right now. So he probably feels at this point that he has nothing to lose. So he has, uh, he needs as many of these points as he can right now. So it's probably a good idea that he's going for it as much as he can. As Mitch was mentioning before in the, the earlier race with Louie, um, yeah, 
the speeding up music on the time, uh, you know, just as the time is running, yeah, probably doesn't do any favors for your adrenaline if you're already under that pressure. Ooh, he got the right pixel and then he just didn't go through, got bad RNG. Zero planes. You don't have much time left. I think that um, if you wanted to avoid taking any more deaths, uh, now would be a good time to just enter the pipe and then just finish the level normally. Because it takes about 20 in-game seconds from the time you start the, the star run uh, over the over the munchers in order to finish the level. So if he doesn't get it now, it's... Ooh, he gets it right at the last minute. Holy crap. He gets the point. All that work and it finally paid off. Zero planes. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Akitar. He got my heart racing as well. Oh, I thought he wasn't gonna make it. All right, zero planes. You're, you're through one wall. Second one. All right, he needs clips three and four. He's taking a moment to breathe. You got this. Come on. Fuck input. So he missed his opportunity. Meanwhile, on Stewie's side, he's finishing up the, uh, he just finished up the World A tank right now. Uh, he didn't get any uh, Wrangless bonus points, uh, so he's going to be making his way onto the Navy right now. So uh, in just about a minute and a half, you'll be the first one to be crossing over the hand bridge. And we'll see what kind of luck he gets from RNG this time. He still has an opportunity to get the, the, the no hands bonus and widen that gap even further. Uh, we see uh, zero planes on the, the World 7 airship right now. So I would say they're about three and a half minutes uh, gap between the two of them right now. So while we're waiting for um, for Stewie to be rounding up the, the Navy, um, if anybody wants to get their guesses in on how many hands that each of our races are going to get, that would be a very good opportunity. Once again, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that they'll both get zero. Some, some, some duck strats, uh, trying to manipulate that RNG. Guys, I want both of you guys to get no hands. He gets no hands! Holy crap! Six and a half points, and he's not even finished with the run yet. This might be uh, this might be a new tournament record so far for an individual race. Oh no way! That's not something you see every day. I'm sure, still he has mixed feelings right now. Like I'm sure he's happy that he got the no hands in in this particular tournament race where it really counts. But I'm sure he's also wondering to himself, where is this RNG when I'm going for my world record attempts in one warp? There. Ooh. Yeah, he got a little too excited going to the end of that Air Force and then just kind of undershot that jump and just went right into that rocky wrench. You hate to see it. So he does not get any additional bonus for holding on to that Fire Flower from World 7. Uh, but he will have another opportunity to grab a fire, uh, either from 8-1 or from the World 8 Fort. About 7-9 or 7-F2. Um, he does have an opportunity to skip it, so he's probably going to want that fire coming out of 8-1. So he's going to use that P-Wing. Very smart idea. Doesn't want to repeat any mistakes of, um, you know, just missing the underpass and then just falling straight through. Oh, he's not even going to go for that fire flower. That's a really interesting decision. I can't really understand what he's uh, what he was thinking. I could have imagined that he was going to T 
to use that tail to, to get the fire and then just cloud the cloud the fort. Oh, he's gonna use it in A2 instead. Okay, I guess that makes a little sense. It's only like a 10 second discrepancy between just playing A2 and the and the fort. So it's not not a bad idea. Once again, even though it's just um it's not the most optimal use of the cloud, it's still he's still making use out of it, period. So it's it's not a loss at all. He's still maintaining a very substantial lead, so this will not hurt him. So we see uh, Zero Planes rounding up the, the World A tank right now. Uh, he's probably going to want to go into the ha uh, the Handbridge section with a Fire Flower. So we'll see if he decides to go for that Navy Flower grab, or he's just going to brave it out. Uh, Stewie is entering the Super Tank at 52.43. So considering that the tank takes about uh, a minute and 15, he'll probably be entering Bowser's Castle. Um, a late 53, so he still has an opportunity to get a low 55, maybe a high 54 if he's lucky, uh, and gets a, a good fire uh, fire kill on Bowser, and gets the the clip in the, the elevator section. We see, once again, the, uh, the patented Day 1 Affiliate Owlglib Super Tank Strat, uh, TM with a Vengeance. Front row, just spam those fireballs and get those rocky wrenches out of his way. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about any of the cannonballs or anything from above and below uh, causing him any harm. So Zero Planes, he's going to be entering the Navy right now. It looks like he's staying in the front row. He's getting ready to get that Fire Flower. Does he get it? He can put one more time, so it's going to be an additional disadvantage going into that hand bridge. He'll still have an opportunity to rack up a couple of points, but uh, considering the, the, the gap in score between them, I don't know... Um, what the chances are of um, of him being able to make a comeback at this point, unfortunately. Um, Stewie would have to die a pretty significant amount of times in Bowser's Castle in order for um, in order for there to be any sort of opportunities left. So he doesn't get the elevator clip, so he doesn't get any bonuses from that, which is, uh, at this point, pretty much not a big deal. Uh, so he, once again, just wants to hold on to that fire. He wants to get that quick kill on Bowser, saying, enough of these rotted discs, enough of this of the Ragu, the Potaboos, just get me out of here. Gets his P-Speed into the statue room, he maintains it through the hallway. Has a little bump in the road, but he's able to recover it, really nice. Misses that dot, that fireball, and 35 fireballs away from Bowser. So hopefully he doesn't get a troll pattern in that upper section. And he's good. Get your GG's out for Stewie is up with uh, a sub hour time but not a sub 54 so he gets an additional two points we're finishing off with a final time of 9.5 which is the second highest time in the tournament uh, the si second highest score in the in the tournament so far with Louis being at 10 just barely above him Zero Planes, on the other hand, didn't have much luck with the, the hand RNG, so he wasn't able to pick up any uh, 0.5 uh, points bonus uh, from the hand bridge. Um, but yeah, he's going to get picked up by a second one, but at least this will offer him an opportunity to grab another Fire Flower, and that'll be uh, really advantageous going into the Air Force and the rest of the game. He already used his Cloud in 7F2, so um, you know, worst case scenario, he could always pick up another Fire Flower, but uh, why bother if you don't need to? How's it going, everyone? Boy, that that race was pretty uh, pretty intense, but not as intense as the first one. Oh, oh boy. How you doing, Teams? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. That was a that was a fantastic race. However, I will say that Zero Planes unfortunately is not going to be pulling the one hour. He does not have enough time, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but. It seems like he's going to try and go as far as he can, right? Braving it out, still finishing up the rest of the run. Lots of respect for that. Oh, yeah. Well, he'll probably stop when it hits the hour mark. 
Yeah, that's a good point. He's probably past the point of no return. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's going to, because uh, the run stops, right? At the one hour mark, the run stops and you get penalized for going over an hour. Um, There's too so... many levels left. You can't really finish it all in three minutes now. Yeah, he does have a cloud, so we could do 8-1 and 8-2 and then cloud the four. But again, I still don't think... Uh, I am not in this tournament. This is a, I created this tournament for other people to do do what they do. I'm not in this. He, cl he clouded 7-F2, so he's going to have to play the Ford anyway. Well, no, he's got a cloud. Oh, he's going to cloud 8-1. Interesting. Uh, okay. So he never used his cloud after uh, doing the auto-scroller in World 3. He, is, he still didn't use his cloud, whereas Stewie used his cloud in the Fortress. But Zero Planes had the extra hammer. Stewie didn't, because Stewie got post 2-3. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot all about World 3. Yeah, right? Before he hits that hour mark, he still has an opportunity to rack up whatever points he can. But he's going to have to get to Bowser's Castle in order for it to pay off. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's thinking maybe he can get to the, at least the clip. It's worth a try. Yeah. It's definitely worth a try. Let's go ahead and uh, move over here. There we go. Okay, he's at the fi he's at the 58 minute mark. The fort takes 40 seconds, and the tank takes a minute and 15. So he's gonna be over by the. Yeah. It's too late. It's yeah. too late. So we'll see what he does here. He'll probably go to the one hour mark and then just stop. Uh, most likely. Amazing by both of them, man. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely. It was actually very close. I think they were tied with two and a half points for at least the first half of the game, and they then were. The, the gap just completely widened by Worlds 5 and 6. If Stewie didn't do that Jesus clip, not only would he have not got those extra points, probably would have been a little bit more tilted, too. Right? So you never know. Yeah, I think that if I took damage from the fire and then just lost the Jesus clip, I would have... My mentality would have totally shifted for the rest of the game. Yep. That, would have def that would have definitely affected my performance for the rest. Yeah. And it's again, the, the runners don't know where they're at, right? So it's totally a gamble on Stewie's part. But I mean, in the long run, I'm glad that a couple of the gambles that Zero Planes took paid off as well. Like getting that 7-7 seven, seven clip right at, the le right at the buzzer, like 10 seconds away. Right, and the Wendy kill, and door 3. Too, yeah. And they both got the 7-6 uh, mac and cheese. Yeah. Good on both of our races for putting on a great performance. This has been a hell of a show to watch. That is right. Not going to be able to make it for the Bowser's clip. That point 0.5 is so close. The point 0.5 is so close. So even though Stewie uh, won in terms of time, uh, Zero Planes won the first game because it's about points. Um, and Stewie came in clutch with a large point count for game two. And he uh, took it home. There you go. The one hour. See, he's true to his word. So he loses the point. Gets the second place. Finishes off second place. With two points. But the good news with that is that he at least has, I think, 8.5 8 points to his name, right? Or 5.5, and it's much better than negative. 